All right, let's try this again. Lighting slightly different. I'm still in front of the blue screen. I still have my gray duck shirt on. Everything is as it's supposed to be. So let's do this thing. <laughs> All right, so have you ever noticed how your mind may follow certain tracks in life, whether that's the positive or the negative or the optimistic or the pessimistic route? It'll follow these certain trails which has a tendency to dictate our mood. And as we know, mood follows action and thought often induces action. So being aware and picky about the thoughts that enter and pervade within our mind is very important, which is why a lot of individuals have started adopting mantras, which are short words, phrases, or statements repeated frequently, often to induce certain ways of thinking. So you may have mantras about your self-image, your self-growth, or your productivity, for example. My body is a temple. Or I will persist until I succeed. Or today will be a productive day because I said so. These would be examples of positive mantras. But on the flip side, there's always a flip side. There is the negative mantras that have a way of sneaking in. These are the ones that are trying to thwart our success, and you may not even realize that they're there. So today we're going to cover seven insidious mantras that may have infiltrated your life. So insidious mantra number one. I'll do it later. This is a favorite of the procrastinators. And there's nothing wrong with being intentional about your scheduling, but when I'll do it later becomes a way of life, whether it's the dishes, or making your bed, or investing in yourself, or your friends, or your relationships, it becomes damaging to our ability to move forward. So, I'd recommend omitting I'll do it later from your phrases, and maybe instilling uh, immediacy and integrity in its place. Mindfulness. Number two, that's the way it's always been. I have a personal affinity with this one because it's very, very persistent in life. Individuals will use traditions or actions of the past to justify the actions of the present, which tends to dictate the way the future will manifest. And here's an amusing anecdote tethered to that one. There's a family who had a very special meatloaf recipe that was passed down generation to generation. They gather the ingredients, put it together with those secret ingredients, and then they would chop off the ends and put it in the oven. Hmm, so generation to generations, people would continue this process. Gather the ingredients, put it together, chop off the ends and put it in the oven. And then one day one of the children asked, why do we chop off the ends of the meatloaf? And the parents didn't have the answers, so they called up their grandparents like, Hey, Grandma, or I guess Ma in this situation, why do we cut off the ends of the meatloaf? And she responded, Well, the pans back in the day, they were so small, so we had to cut them off to fit them in. So ask yourself, am I holding on to behaviors or actions or traditions of the past simply because you did them in the past? We're thinking about number three. That's just who I am. This one serves as a scapegoat for justifying our inaction towards developing and improving ourselves. We're like, well, that's just the way I am, so I'm gonna keep being a messy little slob and not clean up after myself. Or that's just the way I am. I'm not gonna be kind to people. I'm a, I'm, I'm a dick. We adopt these certain perceptions of ourselves, and we hold on to them and we justify them via this mantra. So yeah, maybe don't do that. Just a suggestion. <laughs> Number four, that's just the way they are. Now, Similar to ourselves, we don't want to find justification for bad behaviors or bad habits because we should not defend that which we do not want to persist. And if we want others to have self-growth or if we want to have self-growth for ourselves, we will not defend these less than optimal behaviors. 
Number five, I never do anything right. This one falls into the realm of an absolute statement which has no basis in reality. Even if you continually make mistakes or fail, you are constantly learning and learning new ways to do things. So the validity of that statement automatically loses its integrity. So you can say it, but it's not going to be true, regardless of what anyone else says. So you are awesome and you can do things right. For example, your breathing that automatically disproved the statement. Number six, I'm not good enough. This one is particularly insidious because it frames the way that we perceive ourselves and puts us into a box for how we may move forward in life. It may have us stay in unhealthy relationships or stay in a job that doesn't allow us to go forward because we believe that this is what we deserve so instead of framing the mentality, just know that every single day you can improve and involve and become a better version of yourself. You do not have to stay fixed into one life. Number seven, I can't and I'm not. Similar to the last mantra, I'm not good enough. Statements that are prefaced with I can't and I'm not are very restrictive and they put us into a box. So do yourself a favor. If you do put yourself in a box, make sure you put a chimney in there, some windows, a door to walk through so that you're not limited with what you can and cannot do. So there you have it. Those are seven insidious mantras that may be trying to thwart your success. And the reason we talk about this is because awareness is key for development. If you can root out those pesky little buggers that are trying to steer you off course, then you can change that course. Thanks for tuning in. Toodles.